Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of Geekly Reveal. It's that show that brings you geeky pop culture news on a weekly basis. Geeky, weekly, geekly, it's so great. It's me, it's your host. Once again, as always, it's Dom, a.k.a. Brother Dom, a.k.a. Hot Pilgrim, all over the internet. And once again, I am joined by the leanest, the meanest, the cleanest, definitely not the obscenest co-host. Would you like to tell the people who it is that you are today and every day? Today and every day, I'm Stephanie, aka Captain Steph on Twitter, the Snow Queer on Tumblr, and you know, I, I did just shower like an hour ago, so I am pretty clean. <laughs> Hell yeah! As a friend, how was the shower? Was it was it was it productive? Was it was one of those super cool showers? Like, ah oh, man, my muscles feel better. Like, I feel like I can fight the world, or more of is it just utility? Ah, uh, mostly utility <laughs> shower. I worked out this morning, so you know, I just needed to get that uh the stank off. But down it, the drain it was nice. with the stank. Well, you know, good. it's a nice hot shower. You know, the the, the stereotype of women loving uh, lava like showers lives lives on in me. That's a that's something I was I was curious about. Was it is it more like is the stereotype that men don't like heat or can't handle heat? Because personally, I can't handle as hot as I know all the women around me can handle. <laughs> but I'm like, no, that's the shower I want to take, but I just can't. I had mm-hmm. a boss once. She made coffee. We all we were all there at the coffee pot. She poured her coffee into a mug, as you do, and then popped that thing in the microwave. I'm like, fam, I have to wait like 10 <laughs> minutes before I could drink this. And she just starts drinking like, I, I like it hot. I'm like, yeah, me too, but I don't know what you just did. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> and that's why she was the boss and I was the did. employee. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... You know, speaking of of showers and all that, I think I think part of the other stereotype is a joke is um, due to the seriousness in the world. And you, you know, everyone's worried about coronavirus, and you know, no jokes to be made about that. You know, disease mm. and, and viruses aren't funny, but what is funny and interesting is the jokes people are making about like how I guess a lot of men weren't washing their hands before. Um, yeah, there's a, a a a tweet going around by I can't pronounce his name Demi. He's a uh, He's the one who makes that September video every year. <laughs> mm. But funny guy has a podcast and stuff like that. Uh, anyway, he's like, yeah, I, I just realized how bad this all is because it's so weird seeing the men's bathroom full of like sinks in use. And oh, people no. Are like, Were men not washing their hands? And my oh. reaction was, I can't imagine seeing enough men in the bathroom to need all the sinks. Like, I, I unless you're like at a convention or a conference or a concert or something... If I'm in the bathroom, there's like maybe three guys in there and one of them probably doesn't wash their hands. That's true. That's It's gross. That's like 33%. But you should still see the sinks being used. So I hoped that it was just a lot of people <laughs> saying, yeah, I, I wash my hands after I use the bathroom, but I'm also washing my hands for other reasons. Like I wasn't just using the bathroom. I just came back in the bathroom. Yeah. That's yeah, man. Hope. I I don't know. Like that's especially like. I mean, to make a, like, somewhat, uh, like, gender, like, conforming statement about that, like, most dudes are touching their dick when they're going yeah. to the bathroom, <laughs> like... Yeah, that's true. That's, I, I, I think statistically that's true. Um, like... I, what's your, what's the point? The point is that, <laughs> like... Like, at least, like, for women, like, not to excuse women who are not washing their hands after going to the bathroom, but, like, there's an intermediary at least, like, 100% of the time between yeah, you and your actual true. hand touching your parts. Well, that's a, that's a thing. People say, what is it? I, I once heard when I was younger, I didn't, I saw someone like, hey, ain't you going to wash your hand? He's like, I didn't piss on my hand. I'm like, I'm aware of that. I'm quite aware of that, but I still think you should wash your hand. Uh, you know, the, the only time you get a pass for that, I guess, is maybe, like, right in the morning if you, like, just hop out of the shower or something. Yeah, like, how okay, clean just... is that part? Like, my guys. Yeah, I don't I don't know, man. If, if, if it's, like, more than 20 minutes into the day, you gotta... Here's what I, here's what I always was curious about. You know, we've... A lot of people have been in a bar like late at night, it's like one forty-five, and 
you know, maybe like the soap is, has run out and there's no more paper towels or something. There's not a hand dryer. And you're like, ah, how, ha- how dirty are my hands? Really? I'm going to like use the doorknob to get out of here. And it's going to ruin anything. Um, so I've seen people do that, but here's what I never guys, yo, my guy, there's other people in this restroom. You at least want to pretend to wash your hands for the sake of all the other people that see you. Like you're not ashamed that there's six guys in here. Yeah, and, and they all five just five of them wa- are washing their hands. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I don't yeah, like get at it. least like I always at least do the at the very minimum the like the Girl Scout hand wash where like you just you run your hands under the water and then like if there's nothing to wash them with just like shake them and then like two shakes and then you wipe them off on your jeans or whatever like. I think that's just that's to... what, yeah. I think that's better, right? It's got like at least. <sighs> At least you're washing, like, the very basic mess off, I guess. Like, it's like you like said it's not going to kill some... bacteria, but, like... But sometimes you just want to get the stank off, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and dirt. We might not kill bacteria, but we should at least be killing dirt. Because, come on, be better, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that, that's, that's the coronavirus take. Yeah, that, that's uh, where we are. That's your coverage, your Geekly Reveal coverage on yeah. coronavirus today. Please wash your hands. Assuming this isn't, like, a worldwide, world-ending pandemic, which I don't believe it will be, knock on wood, it'll eventually go away the way the flu does. And the favor I'm asking you all is to please continue to wash your hands as if there's a worldwide pandemic happening all the time. Maybe we can prevent it or just not be gross. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Going forward, you know, just, like, carry, carry these... Carry the habits that you learn from trying to prevent coronavirus into your everyday life. Yes, it's simple. Be clean. But we have we have pop culture to talk about. Let's uh, actually, let's, this is a great segue. This is we're going from one pandemic to the next, right? We can we yeah. can make that jump. So you want to talk about something? Yeah. So they announced. Well, it's been two weeks since we talked. Um, but That's in, true. I think in the last week it was they announced that the uh, the HBO adaptation of the last of us is going to be coming through um that's pretty cool pretty excited about that me and my brother had a few laughs about whether they were going to cast ellen page as ellie um <laughs> yeah so a lot of people making that joke but uh i mean in a full She's probably a little too old now right yeah like maybe is <laughs> like adult ellie if they made the last of us 2 movie but like like ellie's like 13 like yeah but we we've already been like, uh, tin hatting about who could play who, and we're thinking right now the the girl, f- I have no idea what her name is, but the girl from the more recent It movies, she's, like, got a lot of freckles and red hair, and, like, the freckles, like, if you put her right up next to a picture of Ellie, like, very, like, uh, chef's kiss, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> That 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 works. Combo, There's a lot of but... what Beverly Marsh is that the character? That's the character, yeah, I think. So yeah, so Sophia L- Lillis. Yes. Okay, I could. Oh no, this second picture is so on Google. Yeah, that just looks like Ellie to me. This yeah, so that's 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 it. our Cassidy. Hey, and and, and eighteen years old, so like still like pretty much a child enough that we're not like getting a 40 year old to play a 13 year old yeah right cool. um, i could i could see that yeah so we're pretty we that's that's who we're banking on but we um we also were like speculating about which grizzled white man they'll get to play joel joel um our first our first like like uh low bar like not too much thought put into it choice was uh nikolaj 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 coster waldau who plays um jamie lannister okay if, you know, he looks who he's looking like to me is uh john krasinski oh like, from the quiet place like not from the office but from the quiet place mm-hmm. i think i i think that could work like i, I still think see him is from the office but i think like I don't know. I, I think he could. I think. I think he could pull it off with no, his beard. No, yeah, I could see that. Who was Jamie Lannister played by? I've. This is live researcher right here. Hmm. Let's see. I, I could see that. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna I think I still want to go with Mr. Krasinski over here, but I I like this. This is fun. No, yeah, this is uh, this is where we're at. We're just uh speculating, but nothing is set in stone except right now the director like the, the directorial team, I guess. So the it's the guy who directed the video game, which is cool that they have Good. that kind of That's... like I don't know if it'll be just like the authenticity and like making sure that it's true to the story and whatnot. Um, that's, eh. that's real smart. Yeah, Ellie is confirmed gay already. Like we're not fucking around. Um, just not saying that this needs to be like I don't know how to put this. Is is it ever like? Do we know that in the first game or? So it was. Um, it was revealed in the DLC for the first that's game. Right. Okay. Um, but. And then in the second game, she has a girlfriend. But, uh, but yeah. yeah, the other person, the other ex- exciting attached person, to me at least, is Craig Mazin, who um, did do the Hangover movies, but more recently um, won acclaim and I think some awards for HBO's Chernobyl. Yeah, that's that's what I remember laughing about. People were like, oh, Chernobyl's coming out like from the Hangover guy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he did a... <laughs> banging job on it that's hilarious i mean here's a th- oh his profile picture is a picture of ellie on twitter oh, nice. uh, <laughs> that's cool but uh look to be able to direct the hangover movies and be able to hit the exact demographic you want it does take talent he's uh, got range I, he's got the range yeah that's true that's good <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I hope they do all, i hope they do uh well with it but yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty hype about it. I, uh, I've never played the game through all the way or at all because I'm terrified of jump scares and bad at like shooter kind of games. But, um, but I have watched my brother play them many times, and it would be cool to see it in a narrative function, kind of like watching the Duncan Rampa anime instead of playing the game. Ugh. Like, I mean, you know, I, I think there's something to be said about. Uh witnessing stories through a different medium um i I don't know if it speaks to the lack of quality or the peak of quality that it can be told in a completely different medium like with some concessions but taking something from an interactive medium to an inner in in active medium Mm -hmm. is definitely a struggle yeah i think there's a challenge there we were already we've already been talking about like how do you translate the combat because this obviously is done fired, right? Yeah, but I mean like Ellie's like taken down people like multiple times her size and like she did go to military school, but she wasn't particularly checked into military school, so like Right. Just and like her fighting off like clickers and stuff that are like huge zombie creatures, like mm. there's a little more say, desperation in the fight co- the fight choreography. Yeah, I say just say, Hey guys, it's based on a video game, relax. That's what <laughs> I would do. It's it, it, it is tough, and I, I wonder if it's one of those things, if this works really well as a show, it speaks to the fact that the story was really good in the game mm-hmm. and could potentially do more. Um, I think in a very well-done video game story, it wouldn't be able to be adapted that easily to movies because there'd be an interactive portion. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it would, it, or Well, I guess no. Let me rephrase that. The, the narrative would be mostly the same but like the experience would be different like let's, I, like that's like the bioshock games mm-hmm. where part of it is that you're just doing whatever you're told to and you're not really considering like if you should or shouldn't uh uh-huh. but the game's like oh look we you never even decided you never decided if you should actually be doing this it's like well the fact that this is a linear game i didn't really have a lot of autonomy in the matter like if i wanted to not follow these orders i just don't play the game so i like what you're doing but nice try versus if you put that in a show or a movie like well if the person's just doing it that's not really me who's following orders so when they say you they're not talking to the viewer or the player mm-hmm. but that's like not a big deal it's just like mediums are different if that yeah makes sense no yeah you, you tell a story differently when you know the people are going to be interacting with it yeah and i think that's the reason that so many video game movies have an issue like mm-hmm. how like, what do you make a Sonic movie about or a Mario movie? Like, most of it is just them running around and... I mean, if you want to make a 90-minute long action sequence, well, 
yeah, let's say 70 minute long because you give 10 at the beginning and 10 at the end <laughs> for story. You could do that, but they have to pretty much make a story up from nothing because there wasn't anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was a, kind of why they did like the Animal Companion for the Sonic movie. Uh huh. Because, like, the first game, like, what are you really doing? Like, Robotnik captures some animals, puts them in machines, and wants to take over the world or an island? One of I don't them. know. I, I, it's unclear. But, like, okay, so most of the story is Sonic just chasing him, blowing up one of his machines, freeing animals from a cage, and then going to the next place and doing it again. There's not really a lot of narrative there. Mm-hmm. So I guess until they want to, like, make an adaptation of Sonic Adventure, they're kind of like, well, we don't have anything to talk about. That doesn't explain why the Assassin's Creed games are bad. Like, there's, they had a well to draw from, so I don't know what happened <laughs> with that and, like, the Resi Evil movies, but... Do we know when the show's, like, aimed to, like, start shooting or anything, or...? I have no idea, actually. I, I've i only just begun to, to dig into the, the meat of what people are talking about. Um, let me see. I bet Craig Mason will tell us. Let's see... Unclear. Still unclear. But, um, (laughs) at least based on his, on his Twitter, but... Okay. Well, let's see what happens once they, once they cast some people. Yeah, but he does say it's his, uh, his favorite video game of all time, so that's nice to have someone who's excited about it. Yeah, at least if it's... like a fan. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I kind of want to. One time, I don't know if we want to do it. And this is uh, we should like I want to like fan cast like a Smash Bros. universe like movie. Yeah. And the hard part about that is, is I think we need to have a term called like live animation, like the Lion King movie, where like mm-hmm. it's live action and despite the fact that it's literally CGI, and so it still is animated, but it kind of has a look of like not being animated Mm -hmm. and so like if you did a smash bros universe movie would you have the human characters be actors and people or would you do them as cgi like we already have pikachu and sonic are not human i I wouldn't Mm -hmm. want them to be so should they be like rocket raccoon and you have like star lord walking around or should everybody be animated like what would you do um that's a good question. I'm not question. gonna hold you to this either. It's cause <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I feel like the the CGI characters are already designed to um to look as quote unquote realistic to the real world as the rest. Or like as um like as a as a goal, like, you know, like they're supposed to fit in, in the real world. Yeah. So I feel like the, and there's probably like some, um, some like middle ground characters, like who you would probably need to do some CGI to, or at least like, like Drax level makeup. Yeah. Which is good makeup, but. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, I feel like the human characters would need, would probably, should probably just be human. I mean, I, I like that too. I guess it only gets weird when you start to get to the, like, villager, who's, I guess, a human. Mm Mm-hmm. But, like, looks drastically different than, hell, even Mario could be played like a human, but, like, the villager has, like, a bobblehead (laughs) shape. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, Mario, like, I don't know, even, like, Mario, I guess, like, you would have to, I'm, like, I guess thinking of the difference between, like, like, Zero Suit Samus and Mario, like. Yeah, like, their world's Zero Suit Samus, like, that's just, like. I don't know, like... That's just uh, a lady. That's just a lady, <laughs> yeah. That's... But, like, Mario or, like, the villager or whatever are, like, much more stylized? Yeah. I... You know, it, it is weird. Like, do you do a prosthetic nose or something? Do you do, like, a CGI overlay? Do you just have them be a person, like, in the old Mario movies? Like, I don't think that's why those movies are bad. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's because Mario was just a guy. Like, I don't think that was a problem. I don't know. I think it's an interesting, it's an interesting situation. Unless you just go completely wild and just say literally everybody's in whatever style their movie's in. So you mm-hmm. have like an animated Mario and Luigi, but the Fire Emblem people are like 2D anime animation, like Roger Rabbit style. Huh? 
<laughs> that would be have, wild. Like, just hey, just say screw it, because that's the strength of Smash Bros. You have CGI Sonic and Pikachu. You have some people that are 2D animated. You have some live action. Live action makeup and CGI. Mm-hmm. This wouldn't be cheap, but if any company could afford it, like, Nintendo could. Yeah, for real. Like, they've got so much money. Just infinite money. And people will go see it just for the sake of it. Like, why not? <laughs> yeah, for real. Give us give us the thing. Yeah, we should do that one day. Like, try to try to cast it, like we'd want the people to be just for fun maybe release that Ugh. so what, what's what else we got on the list today i don't know you talked you said you play a video you played a video game i did do that actually it's very exciting One as second. an aside real quick before you jump into your video game talk yeah. how insanely hard are you finding it to not touch your face um to not touch my face not that hard to, to like not put my fingernails in my mouth like i don't bite them anymore but like i still will like grind them on my teeth mm-hmm. i'm finding that difficult but like not I... touching my face is only like if if i have the passing thought it's kind of like don't do it, don't do it mm-hmm. but i don't touch my face that much like if i do it's with like my arm yeah well it's i'm having the, tr- the struggle be- that i um so I don't have my nose ring in now because I like I had like a it was rubbing on the inside of my nose and like I had to take it out for a while so it could heal up but the like I haven't put it back in yet cuz I already touched my nose a lot like <laughs> Oh yeah cuz you just spin it right Yeah like and I <laughs> don't think that it would be good to have an additional thing there that like cuz like the one depending on the the nose ring, like, but the one I had in before I ha- had to take it out, like, is a circle, and it has a jewel at one point of it, so, like, you gotta keep, like, pushing it, like, gravity pulls the jewel down to be, like, right under my nose, and so I have to keep pushing it so that it's up against, like, fl- flush against my skin, as opposed to, like, under yeah. my nostril. Oh, yeah, you don't want to- okay, yeah. And that's uh, a lot of touching my face. Yeah. That's, and that's not great at this time. <laughs> not, not, yeah, not, not the recommended path. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, I, I, I haven't been touching my face too, too much any more than normal. But again, um, with, with the hardships that I'm on, I, I'm not really leaving the house anyway. So I could mm-hmm. probably get away with just not washing my hands and smacking myself in the face. And it wouldn't be too much of a problem. It'd just be gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's uh, yeah. Lucky me. <laughs> Lucky you, the 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 un unexpected blessings. Yeah, you know what? Being stuck at home. Coming threes, uh, but no, I played a game called uh, One Step from Eden. Um, I don't know any about anything about the story or why it's called that. Oh, that was, frank- that was exactly what I was going to ask you. <laughs> quite frankly, I don't give a damn. Um, <laughs> and this is not to slight it. it. It seems like it might have some good story and some good lore, mm-hmm. but the reason I'm playing it is because uh, the battle system is pretty much like copied from Mega Man Battle Network. Mm-hmm. Um, there's several spin-off Mega Man games, just FYI, at least there were when they were coming out, but this one's not a platformer. It was uh, sort of like a card kind of game mixed with like a grid-based fight. So I bring this up every time like some weird AI stuff happens. The premise was instead of if when Dr. Light and Dr. Wally were working together, if instead of doing, I want to say Dr. Light's path, Mm-hmm. and make or maybe i forget maybe it was dr wiley if they wouldn't have gone down the path of robotics and gone down network research this is like an alternate timeline so instead of robot masters like mega man you have what they call a net navigator like a net navi mm-hmm. and it's basically like imagine if like mix like siri with cortana but it's not like sexual like it like cortana is for some reason you have like a little personal assistant on your phone they call it a personal terminal or like a pet because Jokes. Um, <laughs> jokes. But you had like Mega Man on your phone or whoever your Navi was and they could go into the computer and like fight viruses and stuff and like turn on different things. And everything was network connected or at least had its own network. And you fought by like, you would send them little chips, like you'd put them in your machine and uh, it'd be like big gun or like spreader shot or wide sword, short sword or long sword or different things like that. And also Mega Man could do his little shot. Um, different people had different stuff like your rival, like your buddy rival had Guts Man the one guy that is like, uh, he was like sort of like a government agent kid kind of thing. Actually, real hard Todoroki vibes looking back on it. Nice. Um, 
but he had proto man so you're like oh okay cool this guy's like a real badass ace and i keep beating him because i'm the protagonist but like in real honesty there's no way you'd ever beat this dude he was really good but the problem with this world was since everything was internet connected including like the weather like they got to a really peaceful state so like all terrorism was done through like internet stuff like someone would come to like an airplane and they always say it was like they're like plugging in like yeah jack in and like people like that's uncomfortable but fine so they would like just jack into like a plane or something like hey my my navi magnet man went and took over the system so now this plane's going down and you can't stop me so you're like guess we got to go into the internet and stop magnet man and that was cool stuff like that but you'd have little things where someone says man i don't like that guy i'm gonna send a virus to his toaster so it shoots out fire it's like oh (laughs) that's good that you're able to do that i guess so, like, anytime network stuff gets really connected, I'm like, guys, we're getting really close to this. Like, you know, one day someone like Elon Musk is going to be like, what if we can make the weather more suitable and we can control it through computers? It's like, cool. What if someone hacks that computer and decides we're getting nothing but tornadoes and earthquakes? I'm like, well, that won't happen. Like, yeah, that's you say that won't happen. That's the only thing people want to happen. Yeah. Also, um, like, my guy, like, watch a movie. Watch one movie. Yeah. Like, not to be too weird and nerdy but like there's literally a whole series of movies saying like hey maybe we don't make skynet maybe we don't make uh the computer from i have no mouth and must scream like maybe we don't do that um yeah also like snowpiercer exists like so many things but i really loved the series it was really fun and had a lighthearted theme despite the fact that like terrorism was the common threat that was stopped by 10 year olds that you know by the way if you're ever in a situation where you're running a computer, like, horrible organization, and the guy that wants to stop you is 10, you could probably just jump over the desk and punch him in the face and stop him. <laughs> but they never did this, despite the fact that you're stopping, like, like dudes with guns. But, mm-hmm. like, no, nah, I'm not going to shoot you. Like, you beat my computer guy. Guess I'll go home. <laughs> um, all that tangent aside, you all should go try to find a way to play that if you can. This game has the same combat system. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I was just like, yes, I want to play that because it was really fun. And it has like roguelite elements to it. So like every time you complete a fight, you get what was in that game, the little chips or the skills or abilities, you get one of those, like a new ability and they're on mm-hmm. cooldowns. So like you use one and you run out of some mana and you like bring it back. And then you have like your pea shooter, which just does damage over time, which if you're waiting for mana to grow back up or your uh, abilities don't match what you're trying to do. Like if you're trying to shoot ice things at an ice dude, it's probably better to just use your pea shooter. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, you know, the, the art's really, really adorable and totally my style. It's kind of sprite-based. Um, we love to cute, see it. Yeah, cute girl protagonist. It's published by Humble Bundle, who is putting out some bangers. And uh, yeah, I'm, I played the demo of it. Uh, it's not set for release for, I think, like another month or two. But definitely something to keep your eyes on. Nice. And I got a beta key today for this game called Diabotical. Diabotical? I like yeah. that. Yeah, it's cute, right? It's a- um, some good puns so for all the people that are hardcore gamers uh it's basically just quake and but with little robots so for everybody who's not familiar with quake which i'm only slightly familiar but it's an arena shooter which means it's all about like death matches and you're in like a somewhat closed space and you go run around with paths and just try to like death match and get the most kills or eliminate the other team mm-hmm. it's just a shooty shooty bang bang game but since we're all little spheroid type robots it doesn't come off that violent even if it's mm-hmm. like i have a rocket launcher i have like the ak equivalent it's like yeah but you're a goofy little robot um so it's not it doesn't ones. feel as violent yeah. doesn't feel like you're like shooting a dude it's like oh my little robot shot another little robot oh well like <laughs> cool um but it, it looks it looks fun i saw some people playing on stream last weekend so i got a, a key for it through the closed beta and I'm going to give it a shot, but it's, it seems like it's trying to like do like the, be able to court esports players with something that's considered like high skill without like a lot of guff and nonsense. Um, while still having like a, a robot, uh, sorry, Rocket League aesthetic. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen Rocket League, but it feels very accessible without being kiddie, but it's just family friendly since it's little RC cars, basically. Interesting. This feels like it's, yeah, it feels like it's going for the same appeal. And I think it's going to be free to play. Like, I think it's going to be either you buy skins or microtransactions or something, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but they want people to be able to play and you like you give them money through other means later on that looks nice yes. and man, i actually saw a lot of games this week that aren't even coming out i'm sorry to talk your ear off <gasps> no, there's t- two that... tell me yeah here's two um so i saw one 
I'll have to find this later. We can talk more about it when it gets closer. But I saw a roller derby game. Interesting. Um, yeah, they said it was, it's by Ubisoft, and the people who were explaining it were very French or French-Canadian, which is an accent that I don't hear a lot, so it's kind of mm-hmm. cool. But it's, it's like roller derby mixed with Rocket League, so you skate around, and you can like knock your opponents down and out, and you want to throw a ball through like a hoop. But it looked really cool. You create a character. Uh, one of the characters they had like in their video, like promo video, was a black lady who had nice. like pretty good-looking hair. Like It didn't look like trash. Um, this was going to say, isn't Ubisoft the one who does Assassin's Creed? They are. And they were like, hmm, animating women, it'd be so hard. Look, I, I defend them saying that because I saw that game and they, <laughs> they couldn't. And I'm not sure why they <laughs> couldn't. That's the one where like the lady's face didn't render. Yeah. So I don't know what they were doing. Um, it's just wild of the, bold of them to take on a a like primarily female sport. Yeah. Um, and they, they, the characters didn't look necessarily super, uh, one gender or the other. Like, it's, mm-hmm. there was a little bit of, like, gender queer non-binary. Yeah. Yeah, because I was like, oh, if I was adapting, like, such a, a female-centered sport, I'd try to have, like, more specifically women in there. And then I, you know, had to remember that, like, not, you know, gender's not binary. And, you mm-hmm. know, like, don't think in those terms. And then I'm like, oh, no, I, th- I think there's just a wide range of people that you can play as. And I think part of, we want you to make your own character. They're just like, go ahead. And it, it might be one of those things where, I forget kind what game do does like it. Kind of like the Femme Butch scale as well as the... Yeah, I think it was Saints Row actually had, they didn't have a gender select. They had a gender slider. So, you know, when they create a character where it's like, I'm going to be tar skinny. You just go from tar short, fat or skinny. You just like drag the slider between it. Mm-hmm. I think with theirs, the gender was just like a line. So on the left was like one like end and another. Super female, like. Yeah. And the other was like super like butchy guy. And you could be in the middle. You could change it. And even the characteristics that you might associate with one group or the other, you could still modify those. So even if you're like, you know what? I want something that's commonly associated with this group, but I want to be on the other group. They're like, that. we don't, that, okay, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. you just got to, we just need you to blow some stuff up later. You can really look how, how you want <laughs> Be who you are. That doesn't matter to me. And that's, really, to... that's really all we ask of society. Yeah. It's really simple. Um, I think Temtem did something similar. Where I think you just picked like he, she, or they. They just like did a pronoun picker. And I think since they're kids, they all kind of looked relatively the same. Mm-hmm. Other than maybe a couple of choices here and there. But um, no, it, it looked really fun. I definitely want to play. It looked fun and fast paced. And I think they're going to be doing open and or closed betas and alphas and stuff, so I signed up for that too. But no, it looked good. And yeah, Ubisoft actually, they've been doing a decent bit. And someone pointed out, I think, when they said that it would be too hard to animate a female protagonist, mm-hmm. they're like, guys, this is this is because of sexist reasons, but that's not necessarily a false thing at this point in development. In the sense that going back to create a, a playable character at this junction in the game would be an incredibly large amount of work mm-hmm. that would cost a bunch of money. However, if you had built your game from the ground up with the option to have a female playable character, at that wouldn't stage been, it wouldn't yeah. be that. Yeah, because you wouldn't have to go remake the game. You're like, oh, let's let's just make two, which mm-hmm. has been shown when games after that they had protagonists of those two genders at the time, and even to this day you can pick the dude or the lady, and like, and they don't. It's not just oh, this one they're the same person but a little different. Like they look different, and like that's what happens when you. <laughs> Plan for inclusivity. You don't have to like make some shit up later. <laughs> and then um, I saw a Quidditch game. Ooh. It wasn't Quidditch. Um, I was arguing with some dudes online because that's how I am. And maybe I'm wrong, but I think I was right. Um, they said it's Quidditch meets Rocket League, so it's homies on brooms and the road. Like, let me say it straight. They definitely got influenced by Quidditch and said so. Mm-hmm. But it's. I was like, that's this game is nothing like Quidditch other than that they're on brooms and you have to put one ball through a hoop. Mm-hmm. But I was like, there's only one hoop that you can put on each team. Like Each team has a hoop and you have to throw it through the front, apparently. Um, you use spells to move the ball. Like you can throw the ball with a spell or catch it. You don't have to mm-hmm. just grab it with your hand. Uh, there's only one ball, so you can only score one way. There's not like a snitch kind of situation where you yeah. catch it and win. And... Yeah, so I was like, it's it's a different-ass game. Like, you can't... I was like, I don't think JK can sue them for, like, 
saying, hey, I, I'm going to start with your game and then make something different. Like, again, Quidditch had three rings. It had different balls. It, the wind yeah. conditions were different. Um, Let me just say, like, as a person who has significantly cooled towards Harry Potter in the last several years, I am still proud of you for knowing so much about Quidditch. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I read the first two books and then, like, watched the movies. Like, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't have a problem with Harry Potter in theory. It's, it's just more of, like... And I never will have a problem with it. The fan base kind of annoys me and the author annoys me. But, like, just because a fan base is terrible doesn't mean I'm going to dislike the thing. This is, I don't think those are linked <laughs> unless it's, like... The Bernie Sanders that, problem. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, I'm not going to be like, man, you suck as a politician because you have a lot of shitty fans, like... That's not how that works. Uh, yeah, I, to me, at least, I, I I get being annoyed by people, but no, it's yeah. kind of it's kind of like the Rick and Morty thing, but more so on Rick and Morty. Like, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Like the fans in that are kind of toxic. Um, not all of them, and maybe not even most, but like a large portion is. Mm-hmm, the but most with that, it's like, yeah, but you start to look at the content, you're like, but there's a reason why those fans got that way, because the series does have a tendency to make Rick always seem like he's right, even mm-hmm. when the text doesn't say that he's right. Mm-hmm. Um, and being the point of view character, when he does something that's badass, even if everybody hates it, you're like, yo, that was cool. But like, literally nobody in his family wants him to be here right now. So like, who really who wins? S- yeah. So who really wins kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But I, I see how that affects the fans to be like, oh, I'm smarter than you because I like this show. Like, you know, the copy pasta. Yeah. Versus like the Bernie situation where it's like, yeah, this isn't what he's telling you guys to do. In fact, he's saying, please don't do that. <laughs> so like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, and J.K. Rowling is, you know, well, it turns out she's a transphobe. I don't think we really knew that um, but at the time. <laughs> but yeah. I don't, all the people who love Harry Potter and it made a difference in their life, I'm sure many of them are probably like LGBT people, um, people of color. I'm sure there's, even though they had a character Cho Chang, I'm sure there's Asian fans of Harry Potter and it means a lot to them. So, and it's mm-hmm. just because J.K.'s a shit doesn't mean that those things that meant so much to everybody don't matter. Also, Quidditch well is a dope ass game with some fucking problems that I don't like it from a game standpoint. <laughs> um, I think that I, th- I think the snitch is worth way too much, and it kind of reminds me of Family Feud. Like, why do we play the first two rounds? Like, the mm. last one's the only one that matters. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's going on? But thank you. I I, I I like to retain stuff. I like I like fictional games, and I always thought that Quidditch could be improved on. Mm-hmm. Um, world building is very difficult. I. I understand why JK has made so many missteps. Um, learn to take a hint and learn from people. Ask for help. But world building is hard. I, I get that. I, I can't do it. But this game did look pretty sick. And it definitely is like, you know, what if we made Quidditch, but it was our own thing so we don't get sued? Like, uh-huh. And these people are like, it's clearly inspired by Harry Potter. I'm like, yeah, it is. But that's yeah, how copyright infringement are... works. Yeah, lots of things are clearly inspired by other things. Like, sorry. Yeah. And then one of the people said, like I said before, this be like if I made Star Wars and all I did was change the names. I'm like, to be fair, that's the only thing that Star Wars can copyright because, oh, we have like beam swords. Yeah, they may be in the first, but that's in Smash Bros. And they can't do anything about that. They have a beam sword. Oh, a villain with a respirator. You mean like several of the villains in My Hero Academia? Or <laughs> yeah. oh, do you mean wizards in space like, say, and a mm, whole bunch of stuff? <laughs> My Hero Academia is not the best. <laughs> No, they're ripping stuff Counter off. Counter-example. But, you know. <laughs> but the other point like the other point is, like, I, my favorite series, Sonic, ripped off the, the Death Star and being a Super Saiyan, and no one can do anything about it, because, like, oh, a space station? Like, that's yeah. not a... You can't copyright You can't copyright that a space concept. station. Yeah, so, like, like, wizards flying on brooms, you can't copyright that. You can copyright a three-ringed game where, like, one point... Like, so my whole point was like, yo, even if you rip something off, there's only so much someone can do about it because it's not an exclusive idea. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'm wrong, but I think you'd you'd win that, but everyone would give you the side eye. Is like, I think they'd be like, you stole this. Like, yeah, I did, but I changed it, and I'm not getting sued. And that's the only point I was trying to make. Is just that uh-huh. it's it's not copyright infringement to to create transformative things. Yeah. Like, they're like inspired by things. Yeah, and someone's like, "Well, what about the stadium design?" I'm like, "Oh, you mean like like a football match, like a soccer match?" Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a stadium, bro. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, my guy. That's how that's how they do the sports everywhere in the world. Yeah. So, 
Um, but enough of the negativity. It just looks kind of fun, and I'd like to play it. I, I don't know why there hasn't been a Quidditch game, but this game looks more balanced, where it's just put the ball through the ring for a point, the other team does the same. It's, nice. It's actually it's actually a less interesting game than Quidditch, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> they took out all the complexity other than the brooms. But no, it's uh, it seems fun, and I'm, I'm looking forward to giving it a shot whenever more info comes out. Excellent. <sighs> Cool. That's, so on, that's the game report. It's <laughs> the game report. On that note, since we mentioned my hero, do we want to talk about my hero? I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you? I do. I'm just tired. <laughs> okay. Um. So spoilers up to episode eighteen. Of the yeah, dub. I think so. And, uh, you know, it's when the uh the new villain that's uh is around, he starts making plans. That's where we're at. So. Yeah. Yeah. But so. Again, it, Go ahead. Well, I was just laughing because I remember when I was like, guys, the villain is a streamer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you did say that. Okay. That's, I remember you saying that now. It's, yep, I like it. Our, our, the villain is uh, livestreamfails.com. It is, it's, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what if Ninja had a quirk? <laughs> oh, no. Because uh, it's, it's more than just a game, guys. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's funny to see somebody get roasted by the whole internet. And even people are like, I get what you're saying, but bro, bro relaxes. Um, is he British in the sub? Um, I mean, you can't really tell an accent in the sub. Okay. Because they're just well, speaking Japanese. Okay, yeah, and this one, this guy is very, uh, is British Is he very feeling. posh British? Yeah, like, oh, la, bra- la brava, let's do this. And it's, it fits with the whole theme of, like, pouring tea and whatever, and I'm like... Yeah. I, I like this villain a lot. <laughs> and I don't think I would have before but we've had such an escalation of like just things getting worse and worse and worse really dark villains like the last guy we had like abused a child to like take people's quirks away and i guess basically kept killing her and bringing her back to the most also he did murder those people on that oh no that was that was the league of villains i was gonna say he did murder those people on that bus but that was the league of villains trying to kidnap him what bus the the prison bus when they were taking him away and um, Shigaraki broke his arm, or like, did he, he didn't break his arms. What did he do? He like t- cut off his arms, like his hands. Oh, yeah, he he decayed one arm and compressed took the other one. Yeah. So he just has an arm. Well, I mean, <laughs> cool, but okay. <laughs> this is mine now. Yeah, that was um, who, who got killed then? Uh, the the, the, the sand the hero, hero dri- yeah, sand sand guy driving the bus. Yeah, but that was yeah. The League of Villains did that. Dobby killed that guy. Um. Dobby. But yeah, Dobby's cool. Um, someone said, "Oh, you know, there goes Speaking Todoroki's brother. That's not really his brother, but we all know it's his brother." <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, that was the League of Villains that did that. Overhaul's kill count was, I don't know. He he killed Night Eye and like from what we could tell, like his he killed Magna and like one of his henchmen. Like his kill count was relatively low, considering like how evil he is and how many he probably wanted to kill. Mm-hmm. But um, but it's just a dark villain, like killed like a really cool character like took yeah. the quirk away from like the resident cool guy yeah just he a, hurt the million yeah a great guy who is bouncing back wonderfully from what we can see truly because let's be real he could still whoop half of class one day's ass without a quirk just from like being at a box like yeah um because remember he gave overhaul some hands after he lost his quirk yeah which he did <laughs> still involved getting shot with a thumbtack bare minimum like <laughs> <laughs> and he's fought him for what five minutes like a dude with an op quirk he's like i'm i'm just a guy right now <laughs> and i'm gonna still <laughs> punch in the fucking face still get yeah still get wrecked my guy so like you know he ain't no pushover i bet you cops are decent in in the my hero world what makes you say that i don't know it's just like a positive world and like if you do police brutality someone's coming after you for sure um that's yeah that's fair <laughs> And especially when we have like Stain going around, like I'm sure Stain's ideology extended past people with quirks. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like he wouldn't appreciate police brutality. But um, all that said, having a goofy ass villain who's like, ah, I'm making YouTube videos to get popular. Why isn't it working? <laughs> um, Too relatable. Yeah, it's 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 just kind of funny. Um, is La Brava a child or a small woman? I think that she's a child. Cause I'm, I've been going back and forth. <laughs> yeah, like I also am not a hundred percent sure, 
But my la- my most recent take is that she is a child, except for the fact that, like, she is kind of booby. Yeah, so maybe she's... So, I mean, she could be, like, a teenager child. Mm-hmm. I was, like, wondering, like, is this, like, an eight-year-old or, like, a small 20-year-old? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Unclear. Um, I, I don't know. The, the sizes <laughs> of people in this show really threw me off. Yeah. And I guess considering that like quirks are a thing mm-hmm. and there's pink people and bird people and stuff like that like we're supposed to believe that <laughs> that huh? Yairozu and Aida who look like adults are the same age as Mineta whose superhero costume involves a diaper um <laughs> <laughs> who in the preview is shorter than Ari I'm pretty sure like yeah. <laughs> who yeah. is actually a child child and Mineta keeps on being a creep but I I enjoy seeing his character when he's not being a creep. Because mm-hmm. he's just like a goofy ass dude like everybody else. And it brings me a lot of joy. It's like, ah, see, like when you're not being a creep, like you're just, you're like a fun guy. This is cool. This is, you have a useful quirk. Like, oh, no, you're not being a pervert. Damn. But uh, the cast of 1A really is, is, is fun to see. I'm glad that Bakugo plays the drums. Yeah, that was like, I, I mean, it tracks entirely that he plays the drums. Like, they're. Oh, yeah. His, his rich parents were like, you have a lot of e- pent-up anger and energy, just go smash some drums for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and it tracks that he's good at it, because of course he is. Mm-hmm. Um, he wouldn't, I mean, like, he's bound he to go, like, he wouldn't be anything less than good at it. Yeah. I appreciate it. Like, nah, screw you guys, I'm not doing this. And Sarah's like, oh yeah, I'm sure it's too hard for you anyway. Like, <laughs> baited him so hard, it's just ridiculous. Just perfect, yeah. Um, but Got played, I appreci- my man. He did. I appreciate that he's, like, kind of sensitive about stuff, too, where, like, he overheard some people, like, saying, like, oh, class 1A thinks they're better. What are they going to do? Entertain us? They think they're so good. It's like, I mean, I guess people would be like that in high school, but, like, nah, dude, like, I think they feel bad <laughs> for all the yeah. abuse. But he's, he was getting pissed off. He's like, no, we have to murder everybody in the school with music. Like, okay, I, like, yeah, with music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds sounds great. Let's murder everyone. <laughs> um but I'm I'm really liking this slice of life arc. Um to the point that when Deku was like, Oh my I need to learn how to like use one for all a little bit, I'm like, Can we just go back to like the music a little bit? I really don't care like that you need a long range attack, like <laughs> Yeah, if like, you need a range attack, like mm, but yeah, but who's uh who's gonna be doing the special effects? Which beautiful idea. <laughs> like, it's just so silly. Like this is such a silly arc where like I am, was like I was born to do this. Like literally, yes, you were. This is exactly you. And um, when Mineta tries to play the guitar, he's like, I can't reach because of my character design. I'm like who wrote <laughs> yes. this? Why did you write this way? Um, but when Jiro sings, like all the dudes are like getting blown away, like it's Food Wars or some shit. Uh huh. <laughs> I was like, this is so great. I love all. Of this. I like, I love all of this and everything about it. This is so great. I'm so happy. Um. I don't know, Jiro's like one of my favorite characters, like her and Eraser Head, like I love so much. And I like Mina a lot too, like the breakdancing queen, like, mm-hmm. just very weird. I don't know if we talked about this when I was talking to somebody else, like, you know, since Horikoshi seems to like be into a little bit of like perverted shit, but also like a good character designer, mm-hmm. like, does Mina wear shorts because she's a breakdancer or is that just like a thing that she happened to do so he just made her breakdancer later? <laughs> I don't know. I do not know the answer. It just feels like a weird thing. Like, oh, I can break dance. Like, oh, okay. That's. <laughs> cool. I feel like that also just like attracts with her character as being kind of like a, like, loud, physical, like good, like has good control of her, like physicality kind of person. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah, she's a really cool character. Of course, Yairozu can play keep uh, piano. Of course, classically yeah. trained. Bakugo's family's doing pretty well though, right? Like they're good to go, right? Like I think their so, house they... is pretty fuck big, like but he never like makes a like it never comes up that like he's pretty wealthy. Yeah, I think I think he's the difference between like a kid who like summers in like a ski resort versus like a kid who just like her his parents can afford to get him into private school kind of thing. Like Yeah. 
like I feel like just seeing the anger in the the, the Bakugo family that they're like, no, oh, these rich people are so bougie. It's like, aren't you rich? Like, shut up, nerd. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like they just happen to have yeah, they just happen to have money. Where yeah, the they're just like kinda... comfortably well off as opposed to yeah, like I feel like Todoroki's like in between Yayorozu and Bakugo. Yeah, like because he he seems to like. Because he's such a space cadet that he's like, oh, it's not normal to go to Canada for vacations. Mm-hmm. I believe you. My childhood was, I mean, my mom burnt my face because my dad's a piece of garbage. So I guess nothing about my life was normal anyway. It's like, whoa, yeah. buddy. <laughs> we just said we didn't know how to ski. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down a little bit. Um, what else? What else? What else? I guess it's a fun episode. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what... Uh, what happens i just want these kids to have like a moment of peace for like five seconds <laughs> let these poor children rest yeah I'm, I'm i'm still loving it so um speaking of deku's new power mm-hmm. did he just forget when he was shooting todoroki with air like he just completely forgot that he was doing that yeah probably because he's like i need a ranged attack i'm like oh you mean like when you fought todoroki you mean like the ranged attack you used in a previous <laughs> in a previous fight I'm like, I feel like everybody forgot that except for him. And then he's like, oh, it wouldn't make sense for All Might to be using One for All all the time. It's like, you've been a fan of this guy for over 10 years, and you just now realized. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, 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 all right. I don't know if you could tell, but I love this show a lot. It makes me happy. I do. Uh, I can't tell. <laughs> oh, anything else on My Hero? Anything you look forward to, you like, don't like? Um, I mean, I, uh, I, yeah, I'm enjoying the, the downside, like, the downtime as well. Like, I, uh, I'm one episode behind the sub right now, so only one episode ahead of you. Okay. Because I didn't watch it yet this week, but, um, but yeah, I continue to enjoy this show. It's fire. I recommend it to everybody. Um, have you seen the movie? I have not, but you uh, you had high high praise for it, so I think I'm going to have to check it out. Yeah. Um, not really spoilers, but all I'll say is, as far as like a ride and action, it's so good. The plot could use some work. Like Everybody was like, okay, come on, like at the end. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of <laughs> that thing where you, you made an anime that... You made a movie for an anime that takes place at a nondescript time in the timeline. Yeah, so it's... So, like, you can pull some shit that's not canon. Or, if it is, it's like loose canon. Where, take the lessons and themes, but, like, don't really take any of the actual things that happened. Mm-hmm. Maybe, I think maybe one thing happens that might matter later. But, um... I mean, Shigaraki's in and he's a badass as always. I'm appreciating how much of a, like, a villain he's becoming. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he's really uh, stepping up. Yeah, I, I mean, it's getting terrifying, but I really enjoy it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, I've been keeping up with the uh, Sonic comic. Like, oh, yeah. Tell me about it. I haven't been reading it, but uh, I've been watching like reviews and like people like read through it, which I'd still rather look at it on my own, but like, what, like 4 or $5 an issue? Your boy ain't got like that right now. And I'd rather not pirate it at the time, so... Rather than pirating, I'll just watch somebody read it where it's like, well, I support somebody who's supporting it. Uh-huh. Transitive property. <laughs> but it's getting dork. Um, dork. Yeah, they're going through like a zombie epidemic. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah, and uh, it's funny to see, not funny, but like interesting to see characters like get mad at Sonic. Because um, mm-hmm. he's always like this happy-go-lucky guy. But apparently after Sonic Forces, Eggman lost his memory. Um, he had amnesia and was actually really helping the community that he was in. Like, they called him, like, Mr. Tinker. He was helping with stuff. And uh, Sonic's like, just let him go then. Like, if he's not hurting anybody, like, he's probably better off, like, not getting his ass kicked by me every three weeks. Um, But they let Metal Sonic go because he's, like, he's pretty useless. He don't have a real goal other than beating me, and I'll just keep beating him. But there was some guy that was a big fan of Robotnik because he thought he was a great showman and a great scientist. Turns out he doesn't like him because, like, yo, you don't plan shit. (laughs) <laughs> you're just a good inventor he's like okay um man but he this is this is a little political is it oh well, like you know i i thought he was a good businessman and like was a oh, good shit. showman <laughs> I didn't and... consider that. 
it's that's possible. Um, and I, I think he's uh, unlike real life. Uh, Eggman is a good improviser. Um, in most of his plans, actually, no, sorry, most of his plans are bad ideas. Like, not that he didn't think it would go bad, but he overestimates himself mm-hmm. and ends up having to work with Sonic because he keeps fucking with nature. Um, the underlying theme of the whole series. But this guy, like, goes and gets Eggman. Is like, yo, man, remember who you are? Like, become Eggman again. He's like, oh, hey, cool, hey, that's me. So he makes... Ah, he's like, ah, yes, I'll get my revenge on the world for humiliating me, and da-da-da. So he makes a virus, like a metal virus, he calls it. Mm-hmm. And if it touches anything organic, it spreads all over that thing. It makes it like a robot that he can control, for the most part. But it gives him, like, zombie-like tendencies, and it's a very, like, indestructible metal. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, yeah, a little dark. Yeah, a little dark. So anything... Any animal that gets touched by, if you get touched a whole bunch by the virus or something that has the virus, it'll spread faster. Um, and then it can, like, get grass and, like, anything organic will turn into, like, a metal, like a robot. And they just call them zombots. Which, zombies aren't that scary because you have to get bit or get it in your blood. So, like, you could punch a zombie and be fine or at least kick one in the chest. Mm-hmm. The metal virus, you can't do that. It, if it touches you, that's it. So it's spreading, like, like, crazy. Because of plot reasons, Sonic can <laughs> run it off. Um, but <laughs> like his speed, like makes it recede, but not, it doesn't permanently work. Like it doesn't go away. It's just like, oh, Hey, like your symptoms are going away, but then you see the metal go away and it starts like slowly creeping back up. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's also, he can fight the zombots, but he keeps every time he touches it, that's increasing the yeah. power of the infection. So he has to like run more and more, but in the latest chapters, one of the robots, it doesn't do anything to robots. I guess they can just touch it. Um, one of the robots is like, so, um, I hate to tell you, Cream, but, like, or, or Amy, talking to Amy, like, uh, Sonic's ability to run this off is, like, starting to not work as well. Like, he's pretty fucking infected. It's like, cool, we better hurry up. Um, and pretty much most of the, char- like, most of the unnamed characters are zombies at this point. A couple of the named characters, like, Sh- they got Shadow, Vector, Charmy, Big. Shadow was being a dick. He's, because he's Vegeta Bakugo. And Sonic's like, yo, Shadow. Because that's his character, right? Yeah. Cause, so Sonic's like, hey, man, you should be able to run this off, so don't worry. He's like, I'm not a coward. I'm not going to run. He's like, well, that, that's not really what I meant, but okay. So he gets turned because he's, I, I'm the ultimate life form. It won't even affect me. Yeah, it will. You're organic. Like, you're not made of chaos energy. You just have it. Mm. So there's a lot of zombies right now. And of course, they had to end up working with Eggman again because his sidekick realized. He's like, so. Uh, Robotnik, how are you going to not get this virus? He's like, I'm not going to touch anything made of metal. Mm-hmm. He's like, so you, you don't have an antidote. He's like, I don't need one. It's like, uh... Ooh, good, bad, good planning, great planning. We love to see it. Yeah, and it, it turns out, since it's infected so much, it's mutated because viruses have a tendency to do that. So he can no longer control the Zombots. They're just doing whatever. And he's like, yeah, I guess I'll just leave the planet then. Is this a wash? I guess I beat Sonic, but whatever. Um, So his, the guy that was following him around goes and gets some enemies from a previous game because they can control robots mm-hmm. um and he's like i'll just control them with this conch thing it's from that game but he doesn't have the lung capacity to play it long enough so that gets taken immediately and eggman's like i can't believe you brought them here like they want to kill me and sonic which the sonic part's cool but they also hate <laughs> me so great i'm glad you brought them on my face ship now we have to leave um so those guys have the chaos emeralds so they're like hey wait a minute so you gave us an infinitely spreading virus so we can control we have an army now. Thanks, guys. So, like, we guess we got to work with Sonic again, and um, it's getting pretty dark, and things are getting worse. Like, tells like had a had a antidote planned, but his computer got broke. Like, the system he was transporting it to got taken over. So, it's like, we've hit the all hope is lost, and now we're on the upswing. And I'm like, I just wanted to see Sonic jump on some robots. <laughs> Yeah, like Cream's mom got zombified, like, right in front of her, so she's, like, always been super hopeful, and, like, now she's just, like, dead on the inside, like, hi, guys. It's, like, holy shit, and, like, one of the new characters got turned into a zombie, and it's real sad, because, um, there's this character, Whisper, who's, Mm -hmm. like, a mercenary-type character, um, and she uses a gun that shoots, like, wisp energy. It makes sense if you watch it. It's, it's like, aliens can be, like, used as ammo, um, that are also, like, semi-sentient, and they don't mind, because I guess it doesn't spend their energy. I don't know. They're friendly. Um, but all of her friends got killed by this dude that was like an Eggman employee or something. Because mm-hmm. they were going to stop him. And uh, so she didn't want to be friends with anybody. She, I can't lose friends again. Like, it was too hard. Like, that's why I don't talk that much. That's why I don't, like, 
I can't. And the new character's like, well, I'll be your friend. We can go on this mission together. And they become good friends. Like, yay, Whisper has a friend with Tangle. And Tangle gets infected, and Whisper does not handle it well at all. Um, Whoever's drawn these panels is like, wants you to feel this damn sadness. Um, And it's very dark and sad, but it's like a good story. Mm -hmm. And like, man, this be a fun one to play. Someone should adapt it. Someone should Um, uh, make make it a video game. Yeah, you know, it's... If only we had a franchise to put in there. <laughs> Sorry to talk so much today. There's been a lot that's been exciting. I didn't realize. No, how it's long. okay. Yeah, it's I didn't realize how long it's about. been. Oh, listeners, here's a thing we learned today before we wrap things up. There's a small delay um, in my hearing of Steph. So there's times where we both go to start talking because I haven't heard her start talking yet. <laughs> I'm working on resolving that and making sure that your listening experience is still smooth and nice. I think it doesn't come off too much, but apologies if you're wondering, like, why doesn't this guy stop interrupting? It's like, I didn't, I don't realize I'm interrupting. It's physics. <laughs> yeah. It's... Just like just now, like, I, I was like, oh, I should stop. <laughs> <laughs> but we're getting there, team. Um, any closing thoughts, ideas, concepts? Thoughts, ideas, um, concepts, um... Not really. I, like, it's been a an incredibly busy week, but I'm looking forward to a chill week this week, hopefully, knock on wood, and play some, play some tabletop, play some... Oh, yeah. Hang out with some friends, and, uh, we, yeah. We haven't even, we haven't even talked, hey, we gotta get going, but we haven't even talked about you playing Crypt of the Necro Dancer and becoming an even more hardcore gamer. I know, I'm a pretty hardcore gamer right now. I've been, uh... I've I've decided to sk- completely skip over Zone Two because I cannot beat it, and I've been playing uh, Zone Five because you can get more diamonds there, and I can get more power oh, yeah. ups so that I can go back and beat Zone Two. <laughs> no, that's 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 smart. Zone Five doesn't scale in difficulty the same way because it was DLC. Mm-hmm. It just comes with the Switch version. Um, but it had like it has a new character involved and stuff like that, and different storyline. So yeah, is, it, is Nocturne it, the new character? Yeah, she's cool. She I like her. Yeah, I, I'm not great at her mechanic, but she wasn't in the game from the start. Um, so it's nice. To, yeah, she's a cool character. I think Melody's my favorite. Like, I, just, I run the game with her mm-hmm. really easily. Um, but no, did you try? have you tried Zone 3? Is it unlocked? It's not unlocked yet. Oh, that's... Okay, that's I why you can to go to 5, because it's DLC. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, there's a really cool gimmick of 3. It's uh, it's two It's two biomes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like half lava heat and half ice and cold. So the Todoroki is, level. Yeah, it's the Todoroki stage. Um, and that, that'd be all fine and good on its own, but it has two songs for it. So like when you're on the hot side, it has one version that's like more rock inspired. And when you go on the ice version, it's more like EDM inspired. Oh, that's and cool. And like, it, like as you go, and you can see easily based on the color, but I'm like, that's, that's so damn cool. I need to cosplay Cadence again. She's so fun. Um... But yeah. yeah, maybe I'll do a, I'll do a Crypt of the Necro Dancer cosplay with you this time. It can be you Nocturna can Bay. You could. Uh. <laughs> um, I could always just go as like the two player character, who is just Cadence but black. Um, like, like black people, black, like not the color black. Um, no, I figured. Uh, yeah, I just, I just realized it's the kind of game where that could have been true. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> if you, if you. I don't know what character unlocked from the base, but if you get stuck in a level, you can always try to play as the bard. Have you tried that? I have played as the bard. I've played That's... all the unlocked characters. Okay. That's good for at least, like, learning the the, la- the styles of the stages and, like, seeing some of the enemies. Mm-hmm. Um, always go for titanium. That's my tip. <laughs> um, But, yeah, well, Tabletop's coming up. Happy International Women's Day, uh, belated listeners. To you, Steph, today. Thank you. Uh, check out our episode with Phonetic Hero Pete. It's on the feed. Yeah, it's, a it's out there. Really good episode. It's it's late. And I do apologize for that. But I think it's a fun episode. We have some good conversation. He did the music for some of the music for Project M. He did the music for Wargroove, lovely strategy game, and some other stuff. Just a good musician. So I know him from back in the day. And I think that's uh, it's everything. It's I think episode, so. Right. Yeah, we we, we did cr- it. We crushed it. We're so good. We deserve a medal. <laughs> yeah. They can um, they can send us all the medals. If they cancel the Olympics, they can send us all the medals they were going to hand out there. 
Ah, uh, just like Akira. Right? Didn't that happen in Akira this Does year? Does it? I've never actually seen Akira. Neither did I. I just I just know it's been referenced in many things. In the Scott Pilgrim yeah. video game, uh, Todd, who was supposed to have psychic powers, also has like a giant attack that's just uh-huh. the Akira arm for some reason. <laughs> nice. I'm like, that's not a psychic ability. But um, let, let me look. Akira Olympics 2020. Yeah, I think the uh, 2020 Olympics. Yeah, okay. The to- it's Tokyo. Is the Tokyo too, Olympics or- too? Yeah. Um, Akira Great. predicted tw- Tokyo 2020 Olympics canceled. We love to see it. We love for the most apocalyptic things to come true. I don't know what's going on. Um, here's the thing. I, we're not... Global warming is going to get to us before most things do, so it's fine. We're fine. Yay. It's 60 yeah. degrees outside. Actually, that's not that weird, right? It's almost spring. It could be 60 degrees today. Yeah, we're in mid-March at this that's... point. Ooh, yeah. It's not even getting... The next day that goes will look like, yeah, I think we're almost in spring. <sighs> <sighs> okay, let's uh, close out. Do okay. we, uh, who wants to close this out? You I'll do me, it, I got me. you. Hey, high five to you. All right, so if you want to find us on the internet, uh, you can do it, and it's the best way to find us because uh, we can't spread germs that way. Um, <laughs> so while not touching your face, you can go on Twitter and find us at Character Rev. You can go on facebook and find us at character reveal you can find us on instagram at character reveal you can listen to our podcast in a browser at character reveal.simplecast.fm or you could go on the podcast catcher of your choice um and search for character reveal find us get those see those blue curtains you know what's up um you can some of those platforms let you uh rate and review and it would be cool if you did that on those platforms um you can find dom anywhere on the internet that he wants to be found at brother dom you can find me on twitter at captain steph on instagram at hella steph and on tumblr at the snow queer i think that's everything heck yeah we did it i feel i feel i feel content I, i feel like we put out a a plus episode. Excellent. With that energy. It's 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 good because the sun's gonna be out more often, right? Heck yeah. Yeah, because the, we jumped ahead an hour, so it's really like six o'clock right now, and the sun's still up. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I love it. You love to see it. Anyway, yeah, listeners, thanks so much for listening to another episode of Geek Be Reveal. Uh, we appreciate you rocking with us, sticking around. And we'll be back in, uh, you know. About a week or so, and until next time, oh, see you later. So. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> later.